All right, this is getting funny at this point. This will now be my fourth attempt to try and make this video, and I will keep doing it until it works. All right, guys. We have to talk about New World Order, One World Currencies, and how they are setting you up based on nothing more than emotion. And I, this video is not going to be for the people who are so emotionally involved they don't want to hear anything that goes against something they believe in. Now, let me tell you something I've learned over my two years of being, quote-unquote, awoken. You can believe or not believe in something. It does not mean you're right. So this video is going to be for the people who want to listen to both sides of a story and then make a conclusion based on two different aspects. Not just follow me, do what I'm doing, join the tribe, and do what everybody else does blindly. Because then you're nothing more than a moth to a flame. Now, if we know anything about the New, New World Order, the elite, the people in charge of the world. They use people's emotions to steer them, like a maze, to fit their agenda. Now, the world has used physical gold and silver throughout the modern world, throughout history, all the way back to the Egyptians. Banks and countries store physical gold. So, because we know they're greedy, because we know they're selfish, because we know they want to have it all, they're going to make you go from something they desire into something they could give two craps about. And they're going to make you so emotionally involved that you will actually leave reason and logic behind and go solely based on dollar signs. Now, in this world to survive and to be able to buy food and pay for bills and live, we need money. So you do have to make money. It's an unfortunate thing, but this is how the current world works. This is not about making money. If your ultimate goal is nothing but money, your priorities are not there. Because if you have a child and somebody said, you give me your child and I will give you all the money in the world, I seriously doubt any respectable, honorable, loving parent would ever sacrifice their child for money. And if you do, you're not a good person. So with that being said, I want people to understand that we need to learn by what's going on in the world. We need to learn from Cyprus, which by the way, the people of Cyprus are unarmed. So think about that. Very easy to bully a country that can't really do much but hold picket signs. But we just learned the people who were doing the right thing by keeping their money in the banks found out very quickly how easily the governments and the banks can just take your money, prohibit you from taking your money out of the banks, steal from you. We have to learn that we can't trust the very people that say, oh, you can trust us, because actions speak louder than words. Now, do you know anything about the one world currency? They have said on numerous occasions it's a digital currency. Now, the only way you can introduce a one world currency is to start destroying all the other currencies in the world. And if you know anything about the, the tricks that they do, the biggest one and the one that works the most effectively is problem, reaction, solution. So let's go over that now. Problem. Since they have to introduce a one world currency and they can't do it right away and they have to build confidence, they have to make people lose confidence in the current fiat system. And that's why back in first the move was actually instead of people using gold and silver coins like they've been doing for centuries, they started having people introduced to paper currency, which was backed by gold. Then later on, when people were used to trading the, the notes instead of actual physical coins, they took the gold standard away and they took the silver out of the coins and still had the paper. The next step is to print like crazy. Now, if only one country was doing it, I could say, well, you know, maybe the others get it. Maybe this is not going to be done on purpose. But if you notice, every single country is printing money like crazy. Now, think logically. Why are they doing that? Well, they can't have a new world order if everybody has a strong dollar or everybody has a strong euro or there's a currency out there that can compete. And these people are not stupid. 
Now, when a government does something, there are only two things you could say if it's not working and they continue to do it. Either one, they're incompetent, or two, they're doing it on purpose. Now, let's think about how they're printing money. We've seen over the years, especially in places like the United States of America Corporation, which is printing over $85 billion a month, that no matter how much money they pump into the system with all the quantitative easings and whatever they call it throughout the world, that the economy is not improving. Now, if you think they're stupid, <clears throat> they're not. Because I seriously doubt the people are sitting there at a table and saying, well, we've printed all this money, and it's not really helping the system. It's actually devaluing the value of the currency, and people have to spend more of it to buy the same products. But I think if we print it just this one more time, it will work. No. So if they're not incompetent, that means they're doing it on purpose. And that's why you're seeing all the countries around the world with the major currencies all printing. Look at the, the new leader of Japan. One of his first things he did was to start printing more money. So they're doing this on purpose. They're trying to destroy your confidence in the fiat currencies throughout the world, the final step of destruction of the currency. Okay, that's the problem. Reaction. People realize that banks are stealing your money. They start losing confidence in that currency. They start trying to take their money out of their banks, which they're prohibited. So they really want to do something to get out of this trap of the Federal Reserve notes or the euros. Start looking for a solution. Da -da -da -da. Electronic digital currencies, a.k.a. bitcoins. Look how easy it is. Here's gold and silver over here, physical gold and silver. What you really want, but look how suppressed it is. Look how low it is. I have no emotion on it. I can't fall in love with it. And I'm not speaking me. I'm saying everybody in general. But bitcoins, look how fast they're going up. Look how unregulated they are. Look how easily I can make money and transfer it all over the world. They're dangling that carrot. And guess what, guys? Well, you're looking up at that carrot, trying so desperately to get it. And they're teasing you with it. Follow me. Follow me. By the time you get to that carrot, you look down and realize you're about to fall over a cliff, and they snap that carrot away. So you have to understand, guys, the Bitcoins, the Litecoins, the whatever coins, that's their way of getting the moth to the flame. Because you're taking whatever hard-earned money that you've made, putting it into the digital world, and saying to those people, here, here's my money. Here's my confidence. Here's my trust. Make me money, and I will trust you. And if you've learned anything about Cyprus, once they have your money, they only not only can take it, but they can prohibit you from getting it. And what are you going to do if one day, when they get enough people, or they finally do destroy the currencies, and this is the only currency you have, where you put all of your earnings into a computer system where you no longer have any tangible asset, and what do you do if one morning you wake up and they decide, well, you know what? We don't have dollars anymore to take from people for taxes. We don't have euros to get any more for the bailouts. We have bitcoins. And since it's a digital currency and digital is throughout the World Wide Web, and we can have easy access to it because we have computers one million times stronger than you'll ever have, we're going to take our taxes and our bailouts from your bitcoins and we're just going to steal them right from your account. And what are you going to do if you wake up one day and find out you woke up to find out you have 25% less Bitcoins or no Bitcoins? And only a nice little email from the government saying, thank you. What are you going to do? When you have things like physical gold and silver, yes, people can rob your house. That can happen. But not every house is being robbed every single day. And it doesn't mean you have to keep it in your house. Plenty of places you can hide stuff. Have you ever heard of hidden in plain sight? You know? A good way to hide your money is not by putting it in a safe. It's by putting it in a, a bag of broccoli and sticking it in the freezer. It's being smart. But the thing is, when you physically have something in your possession, it makes it at very, the very best, or the very least, very difficult for them to get. And they have to get it. If you put all your trust and all your money into a digital currency that is nothing more than a computer program, you have now said, here is my trust for you to do the right thing, even though you never do the right thing. 
And if you don't think the government is going to take this over when enough people get in, you are going to find out the hard way. And that is why I am not jealous. I am not mad I didn't get in. I am looking at it from their perspective. They don't want you to have gold and silver. You have real money. What's been around since the days of the Egyptians. And if you see what they're doing, they're storing all the gold. And that's why you see countries doing that. And you see banks doing that. And because they're greedy, selfish individuals who want everything, they want you to be away from it. So they're suppressing the fiscal gold and silver prices by dumping paper currency, by dumping SLV and GLD to keep it suppressed. But then they show you Bitcoins. Oh, look how unregulated it is. Look how fast it's going up. Don't be concerned about that. You're making money. And one day you wake up and find out you no longer have control of your money. And what are you going to do? Because you've trusted a computer system to do the right thing. And if this was a perfect world where there was nothing but honest people running the governments, or there weren't any governments, and we could ever do whatever we wanted, then you know what? This could have been a good idea. You are getting too emotionally attached to something that's less than five years old. And all you have to do is look at some of the comments that people will make, not only here, but in my previous videos. So I'm not doing this for any other reason than to help people see what's right in front of them. That's why you have expressions like, I was blind and now I see. Because you can have something right in front of you and your emotions shut down your logic and reason. And you fall for the trap. And by the time you realize it, it's too late. So is Bitcoin's a good idea? Potentially, in a better system. Me, I will never buy, and I was actually thinking about buying at one point. I even emailed uh, the person, the first person to donate a Bitcoin to me and asked them, you know, how can you buy them? And then I thought about it. And I thought about the whole thing in, as a whole. And I realized... I'm giving my money away to something that is nothing more than air. It's not tangible. And if we know anything throughout history, all forms of money have been trading something for a tangible something. Whether it be dollars, euros, whether it be tulips, which were used as money back in the 1600s in Holland. I made a video about this. Whether it was gold coins, whether it was shells, whether it was trading an ox for a mule. It was trading physical for physical not physical for air. You would never see somebody in the Middle Ages say, I need an ox, so I'm going to give you this air. Not going to happen. That is what Bitcoins ultimately are. They are not tangible. They're not something that have use other than the fact that people are putting their confidence in it. Isn't that the true definition of a Ponzi scheme? The New World Order, the people in control want the one world digital currency. So they have to first destroy the currencies as we see it. They have to make you lose confidence in the money system, the banking system. They have to make you not want to go into physical gold and silver. That's why they're keeping the price constantly low, even though there's record sales of people buying things like silver coins from the U.S. Mint. So they're steering you. It's a, it's a rat in a maze trying to get to the cheese, and they are putting different slots in and out to make sure the rat goes in a certain way. And they're using your emotion to work ultimately against you. And people are falling for it. And again, this is not about making money. Because, if, like I said, if your priority is nothing but making money, 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 I don't care what happens, money, 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 is it any wonder why we're in the shit hole that we're in right now? we got to stop looking the other way. We have to stop just looking blindly in one direction. You should question the fact why Bitcoins are going up so high. And you can make whatever justification you want. If it makes you sleep better at night, that's fine. But don't complain if you got your money stolen from you, like so many people have before. The real choice is history. If you want to base things on emotion, you're going to get burned ultimately. And I wish I didn't have to say I told you so someday. I hope I'm wrong. But I don't think I am, and that's why I'm not going to invest in Bitcoins. I mean, the people that were generous enough to donate two of them, I thoroughly appreciated. It got me to see what it's like, and I could see it could be very easily addicting. But that's where I have the caution flag come up. What you do is up to you. If you want to trust all the money that you've worked hard for, to pump it into a digital system where you no longer have access with it, and all you get in return is a couple of numbers on a screen, and if you think that can't be screwed with or taken from you, good luck.
to everybody else. I hope this really makes you at least think, because that's all I'm here for. I'm not here to tell you what to do. I'm here to make you think before you do. Thanks for watching. Peace.